This is the Class 91, the fastest locomotive type in Britain. It is 100% electric and reached a record speed of almost 162 miles an hour way back in 1989. But its story starts even further ago, 200 years ago, and almost 250 miles that way. At the world's first truly purpose-built locomotive factory, Robert Stevenson and Company, here in Newcastle, which opened its doors in June 1823. Now, within two years of that, they were building what then became locomotion number one, a strange-looking little beast built and designed for a line just to the south of here, the Stockton and Darlington Railway. And in 1825, that engine became the very first locomotive operated by steam to haul passengers on a public railway anywhere in the world. And it was part of early railway revolution. Other engines followed, not least in 1829, when the company's legendary, light-footed, competition-ready rocket won at the Rainhill Trials. And in doing so, the Stevensons proved their ideas with the rocket and its successors being the vehicles of choice for the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, which actually became the world's very first inter-urban passenger railway. In fact, elements of both line and locomotive quickly became templates for the rail revolution happening worldwide. Now, I did say Stevenson's there because Robert Stevenson and company were actually formed by several different individuals, including Robert's dad, George Stevenson. As a self-taught engineer working in coal mines all around Newcastle, it was his use of many different inventions, both of his own and of others, which ultimately led to the standard gauge of railway being used to this day. In fact, George wasn't just the father of Robert. He's also since became known to many people as the father of the railways. But it was when he worked together with Robert, who became himself renowned as one of the greatest engineers of the 19th century in his own right. Together they co-founded that company we can now trace a direct line to, right way forward to LNER's record-breaking locomotives, the Class 91s. By 1899, and about 3,000 locomotives on, production at the Stevenson Locomotive Works here at the original site had outgrown it. So to expand, the company opened up a new works in Darlington. It was a global export success, and the 20th century saw a series of mergers and acquisitions. First, with a local division of Hawthorne Leslie, also based here at Fourth Banks in Newcastle, to form Robert Stevenson and Hawthorne's Limited in 1937. Then, in 1955, the company was acquired by English Electric, perhaps best known for the Lightning fighter jet. <laughs> they also developed what was then the most powerful diesel electric locomotive in the world when it entered service in 1961, the Deltix. Each of those was a racehorse which yet again sped up services on the East Coast Main Line. English Electric merged with the General Electric Company in 1968 and by the 1980s GEC was Britain's largest company. And George Stevenson, remember him, had just appeared in a serial of Doctor Who nearly 140 years after his death, incredibly. George Stevenson, I presume? Hi, uh, I'm Stevenson. Absolutely delighted to meet you, sir. Just thought you ought to know. The Class 91, at first, branded as the Electra, was one of the smartest bits of kit on the railway when the first locomotive rolled out of crew works in February 1988. It was part of a much bigger scheme. It was part of a bigger project to electrify the whole East Coast Main Line. And that, that at one time, was actually Britain's largest and longest construction site. 
In fact, at one point, it was even running ahead of schedule by almost a whole year. The Class 91 locomotives entered service in early 1989, and soon faster tracks meant faster trains, and even better customer experiences, and the revolutionary Intercity 125s that preceded it. Because by October 1989, the next part of this railway revamp jigsaw was in place, with new Mark IV coaches coming into service too. The locos were designed by GEC, that firm with its railway routes up in Newcastle and with the Mark IV coaches were built together with British Rail Engineering and styling was finessed by the team at DCA Design giving this striking look and the loco plus the coaches and the driving van trailer at the very far end was all branded up together to form the full Intercity 225. <laughs> It gives me great pleasure today to have the experience of travelling in one of the new Intercity 225 trains. The design was overall influenced by the experimental advanced passenger train prototype, which was supposed to revolutionise the railway back in the 1970s, which never really quite came to fruition for many reasons, but its legacy does still live on in this, the 225. Clever things were done, like mounting the powerful motors midway down inside the bogies, so there's some springing in there as well, reducing the impact of the weight on the track, and there's a computer aboard as well. So this really was a train with a brain, revolutionary for 1989. And also, if you look closely, you'll see a couple more things that are quite intriguing. There's a second driving cab as well. These locomotives were actually built to do for more than high-speed passenger express trains. But also, and rather intriguingly I always think, is the bodies of each of these sets are actually tapered in. Look at the sides. They're designed so that actually a tilting mechanism could be fitted inside later on. So that these trains weren't just fast, they were really fast. It was during final testing at the 225 that a shortened train set with 91110 pushed the limits of possibility to set the British locomotive speed record. A test run on the 17th of September 1989 saw the train reach well beyond its design speed of 225 kilometers an hour or 140 miles an hour, peaking at 161.7 miles per hour on the same stretch of route as the LNER's Mallard became the world's fastest steam locomotive five decades before. In 1991, two years after claiming the speed record, another 225 set the record for the very fastest time between London and Edinburgh at 3 hours 29 minutes. Beat that, Flying Scotsman. It wasn't until 2003, though, that another train went faster in the UK, when a Eurostar train set reached 208 miles an hour on the newly opened High Speed One Line. But that was as an electric multiple unit, or EMU, because that means the whole train is powered. But here, LNER's Class 91 remains Britain's fastest locomotive, pulling and pushing a whole rake of coaches by itself. You know, I still find it kind of amazing that these locomotives, frankly, the work and the products of brilliant, clever people working together all to give us a transport infrastructure and a system which serves so many of us doesn't just nail 125 miles an hour day in day out but they can do it driving backwards <laughs> Now, the Class 91s had many different liveries through the years, but in particular, 91110 was named Battle of Britain Memorial Flight in 2012 and given a special livery. Other ones have changed as well in more recent times. 
Now these locomotives remain in service with LNER 200 years now after their predecessors changed the world. We're going to show the train of the future, the new Class 91, and it should be coming through the doors right now. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I do hope you've enjoyed it because we do love the Class 91s here at LNER. Now, if you want to see more videos like this about 91s, other things involving me or even not, please do like, comment, and even subscribe.